Hi everyone, welcome back to, uh, to the Three Hour News Show, and here we are at the See the Stories, the signature segment of the Three Hour News Show. So, let's talk about science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or we call it STEM. And when we talk about jobs, these jobs are typically promising and lucrative. However, the amount of women working in STEM are pretty much not to the standard that we expect. I don't want to say it's low, but it's <laughs> not to the expectation yet. Now, according to a national manpower survey done in 2020, only 3 of 10 Indonesian women work in STEM. Now, this might be elevated by introducing more women to STEM professions. Now, giving women equal opportunity to pursue and thrive in STEM careers may help narrow the gender pay gap, ensure a diverse and talented workforce, as well as prevent biases from forming. Just like their male counterparts, a woman who aims to dive into STEM will need support in the form of workshops and training sessions to hone their capabilities. And talking about the needs of training, luckily we have one organization that often holds STEM workshops which is Generation Girl. So you know you know Generation Girl from the name it is. The founder is a, a girl, definitely <laughs> or a woman. So to know more about them, now we have in the studio Generation Girl founder Anbita Nadine Siregar, or Nadine as we call her. Good afternoon and welcome to see you today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are excited as well to have you. So let's talk about STEM and the female in STEM. So. You tell us first how you created the Generation Girl, what inspires you to do so and this is a community that focuses on introducing women to work in STEM fields. Correct, yes. So this actually started from my own personal story and the story of a lot of young women that I knew uh, working as an engineer in the Indonesian tech space. Um, I graduated from computer science, I was generally one of maybe three or four women out of like a, a, a team of 30 or um, a, about a class of 30 people. And from that story, uh, I decided that I wanted to potentially create a community or a safe space for young women so that we could introduce STEM fields to them at an earlier age so that when they decide what to major in and what their career path is going to be, maybe STEM is going to be what they decide that they want to do. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think one of the problems is that uh, STEM fields aren't super introduced to um, these young women and so they don't even know that these uh, careers exist. Right. Um, do you so only look at that in Indonesia or is it like most of the countries in the world are doing the same thing. Like they're not really introducing STEM, especially to, to the girls. Yeah, I, we've definitely seen a pattern in this globally, but yeah. Indonesia, especially even in Southeast Asia, is one of the worst. I think we're maybe like the third um, least uh, female populated in the workforce uh, in, in terms of countries so we decided that uh, we wanted to really try to focus on generation uh, generation girls community in Indonesia uh, we now have six chapters around Indonesia in uh, Jabodetabek, Bandung, Medan, Surabaya, Bali um, so from all of these different chapters we're hoping to create that community and introduce these STEM fields to these young girls that oh, that's need it. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you mentioned early age how early should they be introduced to yeah, so we're starting off in um, middle school and high school. So that's pretty early, yeah. I would say. <laughs> yeah. um, we have done a couple of programs with primary school kids, but more so in the foundational skills. Um, so just introducing them to, you know, uh, not even coding, but just the coding concepts. Yeah. How do you problem solve? How do you critically think? Um, I feel like the, the primary school kids are a little bit, you know, more attuned to that type of curriculum. Yeah, yeah. And then once they go more into the middle school, high school age, then they can kind of focus more so on the technical skills as well. Yeah, I found nowadays when you have that extra curricular, uh, curricular <laughs> activity yeah. for coding and robotic, mainly uh, the members are boys. So yeah. I, I want to know from your perspective, why is it so important for girls or for women to be in, in the STEM industry or at least have an understanding of STEM? 
Yeah, so industry-wide, the reason why I think uh, representation or equal representation is really important is of course so that there is less of a gender gap um, uh, in terms of salary and pay um, and benefits uh, you know having more women's voices in the discussions in the conversations of what types of products should we uh, invent or should we yeah. develop those are important conversations that I feel like women should have but in terms of the actual community of, of women as well, I think it's a cycle, right? The more women you have that are gonna become role models yeah. for the next generation, the more young women are going to be excited about this next um, you know, potential industry that's gonna be coming up, which is STEM as well. That's, I think that's kind of what happened to me as well. I was looking for a role model. Yeah. I was yeah. looking for someone in my field, in my industry to look up to, mm. and I didn't find a lot of people. Wow, so you are now the role model. No, oh, we're talking about <laughs> majors. Yeah, there are some majors that are more into girl major or mm -hmm. boy major, for example, mm -hmm. psychology. Yeah. Mostly it consists of girls, right? Yeah. In the classroom. And when you talk about STEM, let's say mostly boys. But why do you think um, girls or female would have the privilege as well when they are in the STEM uh, industry? Do they have like a certain approach or maybe like there's a certain way of thinking that can actually benefit them as well? Yeah, so um, it's funny that you say STEM industry because I feel like now, especially technology, it's kind of seeped into every single industry that we have in the world. Mm -hmm. Even if we look at something maybe like the beauty industry, yeah. that's a lot of that is technologized now yeah. as well, right? So yeah. um, when we talk about the STEM industry, I feel like we talk more so about um, you know like the the manufacturing and the the more male dominated industries, but that actually has now kind of translated into women being uh, being able to participate in and marry a lot of their hobbies together, like for example, makeup and technology, mm -hmm. right? So having uh, young women be in these types of conversations I think is really important because then we can uh, revolutionize other industries as well and having their voices heard I think is gonna be able to uh, give us a lot more creative um, yeah. solutions to problems that maybe men may not be super attuned to. Wow, so we are gonna be problem solvers. We act actually understand the so, so there the are goal. so yeah, there exactly. are differences then between men and women and in solving stem problems there is big I, difference um i think the foundational skills used is very similar um the the problem that we found in our community and in the programs that we run is actually the lack of confidence of these Ooh, girls wow I it's see. not it's not the that they don't have the skills it's not that they don't have you know the the problem solving and the critical thinking mm -hmm. it's that they don't have that confidence in order to uh, survive and to thrive in in those skills um, so that's kind of what we focus on at Generation Girl is yep. building that support system and building that community to build their confidence so that they know, hey, I can actually do this. And then when they're more confident, they're actually going to be wanting to go into these fields and, and further explore these fields. Now, if you see Generation Z, is it different than the previous generations in terms of their interest in STEM, for example? Yeah, so what we found in a, a UNESCO survey is actually 50% of young women weren't very interested in working in STEM fields mm -hmm. because they, it was dominated by men and they couldn't find themselves in them. Yeah. Um, so I think as a millennial, I'm a very proud millennial. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a millennial, I think we've been really good at becoming the role models that these young girls need and hopefully yeah. the Gen Z will kind of come in and I would love for a Gen Z to come and overtake my job, right? And to become <laughs> that next role model for the, whatever that next generation yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we found that the data is that they are lacking those role models and once they have those role models, they are being pushed a lot more into these fields. So, mm. right. okay. so I mean, uh, to be honest, even when I hear STEM, it's like, you know, it's going to be difficult. I don't think it's for me, right? <laughs> so, so I, I, I'm, some believe that STEM is difficult. How do you make it fun to learn? And even for my daughter, she's in the first grade, and some, uh, one of their extracurricular activities is robotic and yeah, coding. coding. <laughs> At first, I'm like, I don't think you want to do that, you know? That's Did not she want to do it? She wanted to, but oh, I wasn't sure. Good. But now that I, that you're here, so yeah. please enlighten me. So <laughs> maybe next term she could, you know, yeah. I will push her to actually do it. Yeah, so um, like I said, I think the community-based learning is really important. So in our programs, we actually don't have like teachers per se that teach our programs. They're, these are industry professionals that are mentors to these girls. Right. So they're the ones who actually, you know, in between classes and during lunch breaks, 
they're talking to these girls about, hey, this is actually what I do in my day-to-day -day job. Yes. Um, these are the benefits that I have. Like, look at my my work right now. It's really fun. Uh, so things like that. So it's it's really just giving them a big sister, a role model. Uh, and I think okay. that community-based learning is really important, especially in Indonesia, where our society is very much um, gotong royong, mm -hmm. right? It's yes. very much, okay, this is um, my community and we're all going to build each other up and lift each other up. And that's kind of the mentality that we have at Generation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is there any initiatives or program uh, that the Generation Girl offer to support and mentor women in STEM? Yeah, so I mean that's all, that's everything that we do, right? Um, on top of the four core programs that we have where we introduce um, and we hone the skills uh, of these young women and, and help them get job opportunities and internship opportunities uh, within the industry. We actually also, just within our community, we always have community building events. We have at least once every two weeks, we'll have some sort of offline activation. Yeah. Like I mentioned, we have those six chapters offline as well around Indonesia and we're hoping to also expand more out and having those initiatives and having those programs that are both online, hybrid and offline, um, I think all of that um, kind of helps create a community um, of the, that support system and that safe space. Um, but all of our programs, you know, on top of that community, we do, of course, you know, teach uh, yes. STEM. We, we teach those technical skills as well. And we also try to um, give them opportunities. So uh, there are a couple of our programs where at the end of the program, the top graduates will actually uh, become interns or uh, employees at our partner companies as well. So when you say technical uh, problems as well, you're saying that you have a module, for example? Yeah for every specific topic that is... We're, we're not at every specific topic yet, but we do have a lot. <laughs> because, yeah, it sounds a bit uh, complicated to yeah. me. <laughs> so, yeah, so all of our programs are pretty bite-sized and we mm. focus usually on just one topic. So, for example, uh, we just did one recently on data science. Mm. So we would... Um, it, wow, yeah. Yeah, so... Very th important. It's a very demanded job right now. Um, so we went to, you know, our industry partners and yeah. we asked them, okay, what are you guys looking for? For. And we actually get a lot of feedback from the industry as well on what are the next jobs that are really, really needed, um, especially in Indonesia. And so from that, we build our curriculum, we build our modules and our programs. And then, um, as mentioned, we try to also funnel those girls back into the industry as well. So your community is sort of like bridging what Correct. the industry needs and what actually needs to be prepared for Yes, that's our students. hope. However, of course, you know, the STEM yeah. industry yeah. definitely moves quite quickly, yeah, yeah. but we try to do that. Cool. Okay, so what steps can be taken to create a more inclusive and supportive STEM environment? So I want to take a step back a little bit and maybe just talk about the role of women in society in general. I think that is really the core problem, especially in Asia. Mm -hmm. yeah. We see that women are put into this box, right? Yeah. Oh, all you can do is, you know, get married, have kids, cook, stay home. and stay home. <laughs> That's yeah. it. There's right? a lot of male uh, chefs nowadays. <laughs> that is true. That is yeah. true. Yes. Um, but yeah, so ideally what we'd like to do, and I think this will also help with the STEM industry and open up the STEM industry, mm -hmm. is kind of open up that box a little bit more. More, right expand the role of women it's totally fine if you want to yeah. you know be a stay-at-home mom I think that's a very commendable job as well but I don't think that's the only thing that we should encourage our young girls yeah. to do um, so I think one is um, helping with the the expand that role of women and two is potentially also creating some sort of legis uh, legislature or uh, le legislation some law to kind of help women succeed a little bit better in the workforce, um, right? Like poten potentially having more maternity leave, mm -hmm. um, potentially, uh, you know, having uh, baby uh, changing stations in bathrooms in, in different workplaces, right? Like those are the types of things that I think can be uh, like physically, we could physically do to help women um, in the workforce as well. If you see Indonesia, what uh, sort of like industry specifically that you see very much lacking of male? Let's male. Say, I mean female. Oh, female. Uh, let's say, is it the petroleum industry? Mm -hmm. Is it a data science industry? I don't know. From your perspective, if you have any data. Yeah, yeah. So we actually, we were looking this data up actually. <laughs> um, and uh, in terms of STEM, because STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Yeah. So actually, um, 
medicine and healthcare oh. is actually very, not very, but predominantly female. Right. Whereas um, the oil and gas industry, uh, transportation, agriculture, manufacturing, that is really, really lacking in um, females. Right. So we're actually, right now we're focusing more on technology because I think that's what the industry was asking from yeah, us. Yeah, but yeah. we're hoping next year to actually expand out to the hard sciences and the hard, you know, the engineering as well to hopefully kind of help with uh, women and funneling women into those industries. We want to see more female astronauts from the yes. media, for example, yeah. right? Sign yeah. me up, Even Elon Musk. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk. And a female astronaut that can also cook. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so see the stories will still continue after the break with the chat with Nadine, so don't go anywhere.